usually, you know, you get to come up here, you know, every couple months and uh, got thinking the other day, and th this has nothing to do with what I'm going to speak about, but um, I'm going to kind of going to kind of tie in a little bit to what the preacher uh, was saying, but I got thinking, you know, why do I come up here? You know, I'm not a preacher, but I need help talking with people outside of here. You know, I can come up and talk to anybody here, no problem, but somebody on the street, I can't, because I don't really particularly like people. But <laughs> First Peter 3.15 says, but sanctify or, or honor the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear or respect. Uh, so that's why I come up here and, uh, and do this because it helps me to give an answer to somebody when they come up. So, but what I'm going to, you know, well, before, uh, you know, and it's, it's hard to come up here. I know Miss Becky, when she comes up and sings, you know, she always tells how the devil comes after her. You know, and if you want to know if you're, if you're saved or you want to know what the God's will is, just do something for God. You'll know if you're in the right because the devil's going to come right after you. I mean, he, he hates everything. And uh, Wednesday night I got come here and I was having a, oh, I was having a bad day. And uh, Brother Dewey's message about how Jesus died and, you know, walking through his death, you know, that, that woke me up. Well, what you're going through isn't really all that bad. But uh, we're going to talk about, guys, uh, three people in the Bible that, uh, about inventory, taking inventory. And, uh, you know, we, at my house we have cupboards and, you know, full of stuff. And when we run out of stuff or, or you take the last jug out, Lori wants you to write on that list whatever it is, ketchup, mayonnaise, whatever. So we take inventory. You know, uh, at my job every year, a guy comes around, he's got a big tank, and we take the tank out of the back of the car, and we count all the bulls that are in that tank. And when I worked at Rome Cable, we'd shut down for two days, and everyone go through the mill, had a clipboard, and you had to count every little bit of stuff that was there. You did inventory. Well, there's three people that we're going to look at here real quick. They take inventory, too. One of them does it right. The other two are devastatingly wrong where they end up on the other side of the great gulf that you don't want to be on. So if you open your Bibles to Matthew uh, chapter 26, put your finger in there, and then also turn over to Mark chapter 10, and that's where we'll start. So if you go to Mark chapter 10, verse 17, it says, And when he had gone forth into the way, and came, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and, the mother, and thy mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all this I have observed from my youth. And Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go... Am I on the right page? No, I'm not. Uh, go, thy way, go thy way, sell everything thou hast, and give unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possession. What did he do? He took inventory of all that he had. He didn't find Jesus worth it. His stuff was more valuable to him than Jesus. So if we turn back to Matthew 26, uh, and we're going to start in verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they were indignatious, saying to, What purpose is this waste? And For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. As soon as I read that and it said it's his disciples, and I, I know what's coming after this, but I thought, what disciple do you think of that would say that? Judas. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble the, ye the woman? 
for he hath wrought for she hath wrought a good work unto me for ye have the poor always with you but ye me ye have not always for in that she hath poured this ointment on my body did it for my burial verily i say unto you wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her and then when I got down to this next verse I said yep there he is then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priest and said unto them what will ye give me and I will deliver him unto you and they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver does anybody know how much 30 pieces of silver is in dollars? $52.80. That's what Jesus was worth to Judas. I mean, we t talked a little bit about Judas this morning. He was a zealot. You know, as soon as that alabaster box was opened on his head, he knew exactly he wasn't going to get what he wanted out of Jesus, which was to, you know, get out, out from under the Romans. So... And it says in 16, and from that time he saw opportunity to betray him. You know, the rich young ruler, he ended up in hell. Judas ended up in hell because they looked at doing inventory and they did it the wrong way. The woman with the alabaster box, that was probably all she had to her name. Dumped it over Jesus' head because that meant more to her. He meant more to her than that box of very precious ointment. So when we do inventory... Because we do it constantly with everything. You know, we, we do it with people. You know, we'll look at those people and they'll, yeah, oh, they're just not worth going over there talking to. But God's pushing you in the back the whole time and you're pushing back. You're doing inventory. You know, so when we do inventory and we're doing something good for God, try to look at it with the right perspective that, you know, I got to go over there and do this. I got to do that. You know, Judas and the rich young ruler, they didn't do it right. The woman did it right. So, but uh, thank you for listening to me. We're going to close in prayer and we can go enjoy the rest of the night. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We're thankful for the opportunity to be here tonight, Lord. Uh, again, Lord, really thankful for Brother Dewey being here this week. Lord, I got a lot out of him and I, I know other people have testified that they did as well. Lord, I just pray that you would give everyone travel mercies all week long, Lord, and bring us back here when the doors are open again. Lord, and I thank you for the opportunity to come up here tonight, and I just pray that uh, you'd use me as you see fit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.